Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to kind of run through this. Basically, you're subject to the requirements of uh, NEPA. You have to do an EIS or some kind of environmental assessment on the decisions that you make. Um, there wasn't any decisions being made regarding carbon. You're sued. As a result, you signed a consent degree that says, yes, carbon will be part of that consideration, right? My predecessor did, but yeah. Right, right, no, yeah. but, but I think bank. that the yeah. bank is under a consent order exactly. by the court to take that into consideration. Yeah. It's similar to what happened to e, uh, EPA when EPA said carbon's not a pollutant. The United States Supreme Court said it could be and you need to take a look at it in that Massachusetts case. And so I just want to want to make it clear that this is not a policy that came into existence when the president became the president. It's not something that um, you initiated at the bank, although you're administering it. And I think it's created controversy here. And as a result, the Kirk Heitkamp bill um, addresses this very issue and puts within there that you can't discriminate against any legitimate business. And that's something that was vetted very strongly during our negotiations on the Kirk Heitkamp bill with um, coal companies as well, or I wouldn't sign on this bill. And so I think we've addressed a lot of uh, the concerns that uh, uh, the senators have expressed regarding picking winners and losers regarding uh, environmental impact on carbon. And so it doesn't mean, it, it, I guess when you look at the non-discrimination language, not something that uh, was uh, appreciated, but um, obviously if that passes, it, it will be administered appropriately by um, the XM Bank. Is that correct, Mr. Hockberg? Yeah, we obviously will t totally and completely follow the will of Congress. And I should even add the re that consent decree that you referred to, the, you know, that's a regulation put in by the court. Uh, we made everybody unhappy. We made the environmental community unhappy. We made the exporters unhappy. I would say we left it. Maybe that makes a good policy when everybody's unhappy, but everybody was unhappy with that outcome. Um, I, I want to get to another issue that's been raised here, which is the criticism that you don't do enough for small business, that the, the bank really represents two major uh, multinational corporations, and, and that's, you know, that you're the piggy bank for, for um, these two large corporations. I would tell you that um, I've had a fair amount of experience with the XM Bank first, working with the XM Bank um, and the Bank of North Dakota. A, a, a kind of iconic uh, uh, institution that is actually the State Development Bank in North Dakota, and they have been had this very uh, long relationship, I think, um, that has been very fruitful for North Dakota exporters. But um, I want to have you address what you've done to reach out to the small businesses like you've reached out in North Dakota, whether you think, in fact, in the Kirk Heitkamp bill, um, we're setting a target of 25%, whether you think you can achieve a 25% target in the next uh, 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 authorization period as established by that um, bill? Well, uh, let me say this, uh, and thank you for your support of the bank, and thank you for uh, proposing one of the bills under consideration, because I know our exporters and their workers are keenly focused on that. Um, I ran a small business. I'm focused on small business. Um, we have, in, in this fiscal year, we put in an 800 number. Operators are open 8 to 8, Monday to Friday, standing by right now, if you'd like. Uh, if you go on our website and you can find something, we have but, an online chat. We do all I, I those things. We only have so to, much time, Mr. Hunter. So, do you think you can achieve a 25% target in this period of time that we've given you in this reauthorization? I think that's a very steep target. And the reason I say that is we are demand driven. People come to us when they need us. Right now, banks are doing a little bit of a better job. So, in some ways, uh, they have more options. When there's a financial crisis, they come to us. So that's the challenge. I mean, I will work towards any target. We will strive to do better. We're now doing better than 20%, which is our current target. But it's, it's difficult to know, because we're demand-driven, what the demand is. So that's the only challenge I say with any particular target in this regard. Um, finally, obviously there's a lot of concern and I think the chairman expressed some legitimate concern about uh, reforms and, and we're very interested in ongoing uh, uh, activities that the bank has to address concerns that have been expressed by this committee and by uh, GAO and by the Inspector General. Where do, you, wh where do you think you are in adapting and adjusting and responding to the concerns that have been expressed about governance of the bank? Well, let me say, as I, I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, these are, all, these are the reforms that were put in in 2012. We complied with each and every one of them. Um, there are a number of reforms that have been proposed uh, in the Kirk Heitkamp bill and in uh, the three other bills that are circulating. We will 
I understand the will of Congress. We will move forward on any one of those reforms that are enacted and do our very, very level best to enact them quickly and efficiently. All I'm trying to worry about is not creating a burden for small business or more bureaucracy that makes it harder for us to be nimble. And finally, um, when you look at the bank um, and you look at the, the hard deadline that we have at the end of the month, how disruptive will it be if we allow the charter to lapse and then try and reinstate that? How much additional cost would the bank <coughs> experience even if we were able to reinstate it? Well, I think we, we, the uncertainty has already caused a lot of concern. Uh, uncertainty has caused uh, some banks and insurance brokers to pull back. Working capital loan has been somewhat restricted, but constricted to small businesses. Um, and my fear is that we've, there's been a lot of uncertainty. I spent a lot of time convincing foreign buyers we're going to be there and that they can rely on us and rely on the United States. So I think that even a temporary lapse will have a very negative effect because it makes us less reliable and it makes U.S. companies less reliable and it puts our workers in jeopardy.